Elizabeth Price, thank you so much for inviting us here to your studio this morning in South London. Can you tell us about a recent piece of work that you made called A Restoration? First of all, how did you come to make the work? And secondly, can you talk to us about the process that you go through of making such a multi-layered piece? You use so many different technologies in, within it. Well, the piece came about because um, uh, I was approached by a, an independent curator, Paul Bonaventura, who kind of proposed to the Ashmolean Museum and to me that we um, submit a proposal for the Contemporary Art Society Award. And eventually we were received that award and so we, we got a very generous grant to realise a project. And the purpose of that award is that you make an artwork specific to the museum which commissions it. So it was the opportunity for me to make an artwork specifically for the Ashmolean. And anyway, I tend to work, or I have done in the past in the context of some films, with historic or um, collections and archives. So that was my start right from the beginning that I would, uh, you know, look at their collection. Um, the Mashimolian is a massive museum of, I mean, it's, I think it's the oldest museum in the um, United Kingdom and arguably one of the oldest in the world. And um, so it has, a, it has a, a vast collection of very long standing and, um, and a very celebrated collection. So it's quite difficult to, to know where to start and to how to presume to add something to this collection. Um, and I suppose I decided that what I would do is look at um, not so much the objects, the museum objects themselves, but the way in which those objects had been repeatedly documented throughout the museum's long history. And because of the museum's duration um, during the early part, it preceded photography. So in the history of images that the museum had made of its own artefacts, there were etchings, drawings, uh, engravings, um, all uh, photography through all of the developments from glass plate photography right through to, uh, you know, recent digital photographs. Um, and so what you could see is a single object moving through these different technologies um, being uh, depicted over and over again um, with different methods, but also with different attitudes. Um, because, of course, how people think about these things has changed as, as, as the technologies have. So I suppose that's where I started from, this idea of using the museum's own kind of archival materials, the things that it had made rather than the things that it had collected, to begin to think about the story of how um, objects are thought about, used or imagined through these, these, this history of images. So would that be like the series of drawings that you used? You also, you speak the voice in this lovely combination of, it's a kind of lecture and instruction, but it's also a narrative and a storytelling. Can you talk to us about that? Yes, well, I mean, I suppose the, the drawings, I, um, I became interested in this particular collection of drawings which were um, commissioned by Arthur Evans of his excavation of Knossos. And the reason I was interested in these is because they're, they're pretty extraordinary. And as documentation, as things intended to, you know, record, they exceeded their remit somewhat, you know, 
which is to say that he used the process of documenting the excavations of Arco, uh, um, of um, Knossos, sorry, he used the, um, the documentation of that in order to propose his own idea of the civilization that existed there. So these, they're incredibly inventive, he extrapolates from the historical remainders, and their language is entirely recognisable, you know, in terms of the aesthetic language of the time in which the documents are made, not the time that they record. So they were a very fascinating process of uh, documenting and where documentation uh, you know, moves into interpretation and even into invention. So they seemed like a really good place to start to think about this process. And the method that I used to kind of um, lead the viewer through this archive, because in a way, you know, a history of documentation sounds potentially rather desiccated. Um, uh, so I decided that I would um, use the idea of a kind of dramatic chorus, so uh, a guide, a, a group of people who, who talk to you, talk to the viewer about what they're seeing. Um, but in this instance, they are a, a kind of collect, you know, a group of administrators. But they're not really realistic administrators. Their voices are electronic, um, and they don't speak in an entirely, uh, you know, they don't really speak in the way. <coughs> you know, uh, that one would recognise, uh, you know, a kind of, an, any sense of kind of a realistic characterisation of an administrator. They're more abstracted. I mean, and it's as if they're the voice of the archive or of um, the digital file system itself. So they're, they're slightly kind of depersonalised and um, and eccentric as well. As, as the piece proceeds, they become less and less rational, I suppose. Do they begin as your voice? Because your your own background as as a singer in um, in an indie band in the eighties, um, you you your your idea of voice is perhaps forgive me, but very important to you. Um, the sound, rhythm, um, music, and so on, and that seems to me to come through in this in in this work. The the repeated voice and and the the different tones of the voice too. Yeah, I mean, certainly, <coughs> I would say Is it that your voice? No, no, it's electronic. It's entirely no, I know, clear. but is it your voice first and then become electronic? Um, n well, they don't speak for me, I suppose. Um, but I suppose they... I mean, clearly it's a kind of... It's an extension. But it's, that, that it's a fictional creation. I mean, a lot of the, the voices that I create, in, say, in the context of different films, the voices of, they're the voices of kind of identities that I rather loathe. So, um, you know, there's quite authoritarian voices in some of the films. I think I probably identify with the, the invented administrators a little more. I identify with their boredom in their work, their need to, because uh, they find it boring, and, and in a sense the imaginative project of what happens in the film is a result of their frustration and, and some sense of their rage. So I think it's kind of a, that I identify with their, you know, their class and their gender politics perhaps. But um, I think the, the, the issue of voice is quite important though in all of the films um, as, I, I suppose as something in relation to the archive and as something in relation to a kind of written history that, um, the potential of the voice to inflect things. And even with a digital voice, because I control it very carefully in terms of, um, uh, you know, it's, it's text to speech software. So you type in the text and it gives you the speech, but I um, kind of coaxed a wider range of expression from it than you would normally get by, you know, by basically seeing what the software could do. So for example, you know, if you punctuate a sentence differently, the, the software will use a different inflection of the same word. So it'll be programmed with, you know, say, stop. Uh, it will be programmed with three or four different articulations of stop. And you can find them, you know, depending on whether it's succeeded by a comma or a full stop. So if you wish to give it a, you know, a more declamatory um, <coughs> inflection, <coughs> you would add an exclamation mark in the middle of a sentence. You know, so that kind of way, and you just kind of learn that there are quite buried within the, you know, it's rather primitive programming, but buried within it, there's a bit of range. And also I played very much with the f with this pacing, which of course is very even in the actual software. So to kind of draw from it, 
a wider range of um, expression and to give it at points sarcasm, at points pathos and, and things like that. Um, and yes, yeah, so I think the spoken voice and song as well, at both as something of the voice but also as a form, a lyrical form, is, <clears throat> is something that I'm very interested in all of my films and like many of them start off with quite a rational almost procedural approach to historical materials and but they always move into or end up in something that's more like a song um, and definitely music and the voice is part of that uh, formal change and it's part of the kind of um, I'm interested in it because it brings a, a very different kind of sensual and emotional register to uh, you know the, the, the things that you're thinking about and looking at when you watch the work. We are presently employed to organize the photographic and archival records of several related museums in a single digital database. In itself, this work is not particularly engaging. It mainly involves the duplication and labeling of image files. But, through conscientious attention to its repetitive procedures, we have developed a dexterous facility. At the keyboard, with the mouse. And this has permitted a slight, but expressive variation in the flows of our work. From time to time we neatly extend our middle fingers a little further than is necessary. We flex our wrists, roll our thumbs, and discreetly copy selected files into another location. You also play with uh, different forms of visuality. There's a marvellous piece, the marvellous moment in the piece, where the film becomes like a desktop computer, and then you animate it. You animate the files, and you open them, and you throw, throw up all the documents. Lovely bit of animation. And then you do it again with, a, with part of a drawing that you suddenly make into a 3D animation of, of those flowers in the garden. And um, that's complicated. <laughs> that's complicated and multi-layered. Is, is that something that you spend a lot of time doing? I worked very closely with um, someone who's very skilled and expert in CGI in those, in those sections. Um, so it's not something that I um, realise. Those actual parts are not something where I do all of it myself. But I do work in incredibly closely because um, and in a way I'm very interested in the processes um, in the different kinds of technologies that uh, I use and I tend to use um, a whole range of technologies in the course of a film from rather long-standing ones uh, even ancient ones um, so there's, there's, there's a number of there's a whole section concerned with ceramics um, and these ceramics are depicted in you know late 19th century early 20th century photographs and then digitized um, and so I guess I'm interested in something like you know computer generated imagery CGI that allows you to um, a certain kind of plasticity that you can say oh I want uh, I want to imagine these flowers that appear in these drawings blooming but I want them to bloom in a way as though they existed in a world of drawing so that I mean the flowers as they bloom they're still made out of paper and they unfold in a kind of concertina way so you can you can kind of move from the mundane realm of uh, the archive and it's <coughs> it's uh, it's kinds of materials and it's versions of sensuality through CGI into this completely synthetic um, plastic kind of malleable world um, and in, in a sense people are very familiar with this technology but perhaps the, its usual objective is to um, be indivisible from um, live action you know that you actually feel that you're, you're seeing a kind of seamless continuation whereas I guess I'm interested in in this as, an, as a, um, a very recent version of technology 
um, which is allowing us to do the same thing as m many preceding ones. So I kind of try and combine them um, so that we think about, in a way, how these means of representation allow us to, to uh, imagine again our relationship to the objects around us. And it gives a visual surprise, which is so lovely, in this context. But also I guess I wanted to, you know, the, the, the kind of the argument of the pieces, the administrators are looking at the archival material that Evans did, noticing how, uh, how kind of outrageously uh, permissive his uh, restoration is. And so they decide that they will extend that. And so I, I suppose this idea of moving from his extraordinarily, uh, you know, um, inventive drawings that kind of that formulate the idea of a culture in themselves, that the administrators take those and they invent again. They, and so the, the CGI is quite important as a sort of, um, the animation is quite important as a way of expressing that they're continuing the same process of invention that Evans started. And you are too. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. absolutely, yeah. And, but there's also, I mean, another layer is instruction within the, the, the piece because you talk about how the tablets that they use were marked for their usage and then they were put into water and and I wanted to ask did you invent that is that real is that are you telling us are you giving us information or is the whole thing a, a narrative of, of, of a virtual dream no no that's <clears throat> that's true I mean I suppose one of the things that's really amazing about going and working in a museum like the Ashmolean and working with curators is they they talk to you the whole time and of course this is knowledge with which they're entirely conversant um, but for you there are multiple you know if you're the, the lucky person just have spending time with them there are many many things that they say that they don't even maybe remember saying they're so familiar with knowing it but that are, are kind of extraordinary and I suppose I was really fascinated by this idea of clay as being not only the medium of, um, you know, the, the intimate objects of domestic life, um, one of the earliest mediums, also of cities, of building whole cities out of clay in the near and Middle East, but also um, as the medium of administration and um, the idea of its reusability um, seemed to have such a strong parallel with our, our approach to administration now. You know, it seemed like a very interesting genealogy, this idea of the clay. So, but, and in fact, I'm quite, in a way, what I tend to do in videos is uh, most of what you are told is, um, is uncontested, um, which is to say it's, it's, it's the agreed history of certain things. Um, but there are always points in the film where something is added to that. And um, so pretty much everything you're told is, is, is uh, true insofar as I understand it. And, you know, it's, it's the agreed history of, of the curators of the period. But the, invent the thing that I added, um, which, is, which is the administrator's hypothesis, is that um, with the figures that are broken uh, to mark a contract, which are <coughs> also made out of clay, the administrators hypothesize that this is for the sound. And that's that's entirely my and their invention. That, um, which is a way of, um, I mean, coming back to some of the points you were saying before about the value of, of the voice and of sound. And so they, you know, rather than the image of the break being significant, what's important is the sound of the break. Um, and so that's, there's no historical basis for that. That's just a flight of <laughs> administrative fancy. A rather lovely one. Referencing a song from the 80s or 90s, was it? The Sound of Breaking Glass? Well, I guess, um, I suppose I was thinking of uh, lots of situations in which breaking inaugurates. I mean, it's, it's you know, in certain wedding ceremonies, objects get broken. Um, you know, when vessels are launched, things get broken. I mean, so that sense of, the, there is a history, um, I mean, an awful lot of history attends to the preservation of things, but there is a, a, an interesting but significant history where things get broken, to, um, specifically to inaugurate something, to announce. And it seems to me that that is often to do with the sound and to do with the idea of, uh, you know, the, in the same way that the judge wraps his hammer to 
initiate a verdict or to, you know, punctuate a proceeding, <clears throat> the sound has a, you know, a disruptive enunciating quality. Everything from now on will be different as a result of this. Mm.